A lot of conversations have been popping up lately about the power consumption of large language models like ChatGPT. And in an official looking report from S&P Global titled the 2023 Global Trends in AI Report, they claim that training ChatGPT3, the neural network model underlying ChatGPT, was estimated to exceed 500 billion tons of carbon emissions. And that in turn got us talking about whether or not we should even be thinking about using ChatGPT, even if we're going to use it to, for example, uh, try and make a better positive impact on the environment. And you might be surprised with what we came up with. The first thing we wanted to do is figure out what the heck 500 billion tons of carbon emissions even means. And so I headed over to the EPA.gov, that's the Environmental Protection Agency, and they've got this really cool tool that helps you convert uh, convert energy. And so you can do things like convert kilowatt hours used, and it'll give you interesting things to see, like such as the miles driven by an average gasoline-powered vehicle, or something like how much a home's, ener or a home's energy used for a year. So you can say, oh, this, this is equivalent to like powering 14 homes for an entire year. So we took a look and put some of the models, uh, some of that data in there. One megawatt hour generates about 0.433 metric tons of CO2. Uh, so if we take the 500 billion and turn it back into watts using this conversion, what we get is that 500 billion tons of carbon emissions would be equivalent to one quadrillion 154 trillion kilowatt hours. Um, if that number seems kind of hard to understand, it was for me too. So I went over and uh, we actually took a look at the U.S. Energy Information Administration's website and figured out how much the output from the entire United States is in a year. And that number is about 4,243 billion kilowatt hours. So if we divide the 1 quadrillion, 154 trillion by 4 billion, uh, basically we come up with, if this number was accurate, we could power the United States for 272 years. <laughs> so that gets us to thinking maybe this uh, isn't quite super accurate uh, of information that got put out there. So I went back to that. Uh, there was actually a link in there and I tried to open up the link and it opened up this mega 338 slot game gampang menway it looks like a slot game uh, I didn't download it <laughs> it looked a little sketchy but that's kind of surprised me so we kind of had to go back to the drawing board here a little bit and uh, I went over and looked at read a number of different articles and we came up with some more um, some more accurate looking ones that reference Nvidia's data sheets the power consumption of some of these NVIDIA uh, chips or, I guess, processors that are used to train ChatGPT, kind of how long it took, how many they thought they were using, uh, and gave us a little bit more realistic estimate in my mind. And so what that came up with was it's about 1,064 megawatt hours to train ChatGPT. Um, that is equivalent, if we put it back into that website I showed you guys, it puts us at 460 metric tons of CO2. And that is kind of difficult to understand as well. But that is equivalent. So if we put that in there, we can we can say that's equivalent to driving about 1,179,000 miles. <laughs> so uh, in an average gasoline-powered vehicle. That is pretty hard to understand still. And so I wanted to go through the exercise of thinking about how far would you have to drive to get to a million miles? Uh, so... I just thought about the farthest distance I could think of driving from Anchorage to Miami. And that, if you look here, is about 5,000 miles. That's not going to quite get us there. So what if we, let's add some more destinations. So we'll go from LA, then let's go to New York, uh, back to Mexico City, up to Vancouver, BC, then uh, down to Georgia, I'm on, let's go to Montana and maybe Texas and back up to Winnipeg. And that uh, gets us to about... 24,000 miles. <laughs> so still pretty, not very far, not really close to that 1 million miles that we were talking about. 
And so if we divide that 1,179,000 by the roughly 24,000, we get about 50, if we do that trip 50 times, that's about how much energy or CO2 equivalent emissions it would be to train chat GPT. Now that is a pretty significant output of CO2. Um, and that's not the only cost that you don't just have to train chat GPT, you actually have to run it as well. And on a daily basis, chat GPT servers also consume about 260 megawatt hours every day. So that's like taking that trip that we just were talking about. That's like taking that trip 12 times. That's a pretty big impact. And so I can see why people are kind of concerned about the impact of ChatGPT on the environment. And I think it's a good thing to be talking about. But if we think about the fact that there are about 10 million instances of people using ChatGPT every day, the carbon emissions of a single inference don't really add up to all that much. It actually adds up to driving your car uh, 0.02 miles, or that's like 150 feet. So that's something that you wouldn't necessarily need to avoid in like your day-to-day goings-ons. But if you, for example, replaced every Google search with that, that could have a pretty big impact over the long term if there's if something that uses it a lot, a lot, all the time. So it's going to depend on the application as to whether or not this is going to be a long-term issue. I think, though, that there's some really interesting things that we can do with some of these large language models. And I wonder if you guys have some other interesting ideas about what you could do with it. The ones that, you know, come to mind are, sure, changing search engines or that sort of thing. The one that really strikes me as interesting is the automated phone messaging system. Like, it's infuriating sometimes when you get on those. And I think that could really be improved. Take, for example... I, I just made a mock-up of this one. This is what it's like today. I'm sorry. I didn't get that. Please say what I can help you with. Reservation. I'm sorry. I didn't get that. Reservation. Representative. Ugh. Come on. Please hold while I connect you with a representative. There We're we go. experiencing higher than normal call volume. Oh, as Please always. Please wait for the next available <laughs> representative. <sighs> I'm thirsty. Hello? How can I help you? Hello? No, 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 no. <laughs> I think we've all been there, right? Um, but with ChatGPT and these large language models, they can kind of make more the conversation a little bit more natural. And if they integrate with their systems, uh, it can actually understand what you're saying and be able to execute a little more properly. And so we could envision the conversation with even an automated system. You know it's automated, but it could go something more like this. Hello there. I recognize the phone number you are calling from. Am I speaking with Jonathan? Yeah, yeah, this is Jonathan. I was hoping to change my flight reservation. I can definitely help you with that. What date are you looking to change this to? You are all set with the new reservation. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Uh, no, I think we're all set. Thanks. <laughs> okay, maybe uh, that's a little ways off still, but it's the kind of application that I think we can be thinking about. So I don't think we need to abandon these tools completely based on their impact to the environment, but you certainly would want to think about how you're going to be using them and whether or not it makes sense to use such a big hammer for a small nail sort of application. Uh, so I think we all need to keep that in mind. But what do you think? Do you think there are some other interesting applications that really could benefit from a more natural language processing?